Now that you have watched the videos covering the major sociological paradigms, we should take a few minutes to discuss how the macro paradigms or perspectives, functionalism and conflict theory, could be used to describe our educational system. If you view the educational system through the lens of functionalism, you most likely agree with Durkheim's argument, school is a society in miniature preparing us for life in wider society. This is done through what Durkheim described as both the formal curriculum and the hidden curriculum. A hidden curriculum is defined as a side effect of education where there are lessons learned but not openly intended, such as the transmission of norms, values, beliefs, and the social environment. These norms, values, and beliefs are known as the value consensus. We also see Merton's manifest and latent functions in education. Manifest functions, or primary functions, are the functions which people assume and expect institutions to fulfill. Latent or secondary functions are unrecognized and unintended functions. A primary function of education may be the transference of norms, and an example of a latent function may be marriage. Students are socially exposed to those at the same socioeconomic level through the college experience. From a functionist perspective, education performs a positive function for all individuals in society and has a powerful influence over it. The education system serves the needs of an industrial society, providing a more advanced division of labor, and as mentioned previously, socializing new generations into societies by propagating shared norms and values. There is a relationship between all these parts and agents of socialization, and together they all contribute to the maintenance of society as a whole. The propagation of norms and values results in social stability and cohesion, which contributes to the achievement of social equilibrium. Functionalism views society as being on a constant course towards social stability, and education is one of several social institutions that contribute to social harmony, stability, and social integration. Conflict theorists examine the same functions of education as functionalists, but they do not arrive at the same conclusions. Conflict theory sees education as maintaining social inequality and preserving the power of those who dominate society. Functionalists see education as a beneficial contribution to an ordered society. However, conflict theorists see the educational system as perpetuating the status quo by molding the lower and middle classes into being obedient workers. Remember that one of the premises of conflict theory is that whomever is in control will do whatever they need to do in order to stay in control. The focus of conflict theory is how inequalities contribute to social differences and perpetuate differences in power. Marxism provided the foundation for conflict theory. The lower or working class is referred to as the proletariat and the business owners or capitalists are referred to as the bourgeoisie. Functionalists claim that schools sort students based upon merit and conflict theorists argue that schools sort students along distinct class and ethnic lines. Conflict theorists do not see education as a social benefit or opportunity, but rather as a powerful means of maintaining power structures and creating a docile workforce for capitalism. Schools differ widely in their funding and learning conditions, and this type of inequality leads to learning disparities that reinforce social inequality. This misalignment of funding for schools begins with how revenue is collected for school systems. The primary funding source for secondary education is property tax. The value of homes in upper middle class and affluent neighborhoods is much greater than those homes in low income or poverty ridden areas. Therefore, school districts in wealthy or affluent districts have more money to invest in their school system. Better funding means better equipment, better teacher retention, better buildings, and better technology. School districts in low-income or poverty-ridden areas struggle. Students in these schools are generally already at risk. For every student advantage in wealthy districts, students in poor districts suffer an equal or worse disadvantage. Old buildings, old textbooks, little or no technology resources, and not the best and brightest. The conflict perspective views the hidden curriculum of education in a negative light. It serves to keep students in line, 
primarily students of the working class. They attend poorer schools that tend to focus on obedience and basic learning. Middle class students will attend schools that encourage some independent or self-directed learning. These students will also have the advantage of having access to better resources. Upper class or students from affluent families generally attend private schools which help prepare students for college. Conflict theory also views tracking as possibly limiting a student's potential rather than serving to better address their needs. Conflict theorists see the education system as contributing to the perpetuation of poverty, the domination of the poor and minorities, maintaining social inequality, and preserving the power of those who are already in power. One institution, education, and two very different perspectives. To a functionalist, education is a positive influence on society, preparing our students for adulthood both academically and socially. To a conflict theorist, education represents a negative force in our society that not only creates inequality, but serves to perpetuate inequality generation after generation.